welcome all to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I think this is episode 30 plus 5 of the vibe. Maybe. Anyway, we're here because this is what we do on the Wednesdays. Just having conversations, giving our opinionated truths to you. Whether you agree or disagree, we're still going to talk, but we appreciate you. I feel like we always wait till the end to appreciate our YouTube subscribers and our new our new watchers, but hey, we're going to appreciate you right now, just in case some of you don't make it to the end, even though you should. Um, thank you, and welcome if you're new. Welcome to the tribe. Uh, we hope our point of view is something that appeals to you. Now, at this point, I'm just rambling on, so I'm going to stop talking and uh, see what David has to say. I, I have nothing. You were you were doing very, very well. Was I? I have I nothing. See. I want to, like, master an intro, like something I say, and just, then we just flow right into it, but I always end up feeling like I'm rambling. But anyway, we're here. We made it through yeah. another longish week. Um, I feel like every, I'm going to stand firm on the fact that every week is, is long. Um, every week is seven days. Yes. Yeah. But every week just feels long. I don't remember the last time a week went by and I was like, Oh wow, that's a fast week. No, like we get here and we're like, Whew, it's been a week. It's been a long week. Um, that's cause we're, we're adults and adulting is difficult. It's this taxing. Is true. It is it's very hard. taxing. I don't know there's a why. Lot, there's a lot that goes into it. I don't know why we we as kids thought that this is this was it. This was the aspiration. Because we didn't know any better. We didn't. Had I known, is always at last. That's what Tina. Okay, okay Tina. So Tina always said. Um, Tina is Jessica's mom, by the yes. way. Yes, I just I just like being at the point of adulthood where I can refer to my parents by their first name. So I'll even text my cousin. I'll be like, I need Tina to get get her life right. <laughs> and then she'll be like, wait, who? I'm like, your aunt, my mom, just, I had a friend, my friend Jasmine, she refers to her mom by her first name. And it took me about a year until I realized that her, the, her mom's name is Jackie. But I always thought Jackie was her sister because she just referred to her as Jackie. It's Jackie. I was like, wait, who is Jackie? My mother. And I was like, oh, and I just loved how she just referred to her mother by her first name. So, Tina. Anyway. Tina, what are you drinking? We've gotten away from that in the last couple episodes. Um, what this having? is just a, it's margarita mix mixed with sparkling water. Okay, good. Because, you know, you can't, you can't have the hard stuff I don't anymore. Need, I are, don't need anybody to continue to are, remind me. You are with child. Last child. LBI. Still, still with child, so you can't last, but not least. Can't have it. Can't have that hard stuff. Leave it. Leave it to you me. You should give up. Leave it to your boy. I've actually read a lot of articles about partners who gave up things for their significant Great men. other. Great and men. And I was like, wow, my husband could never. You know, how people. Uh, you know, how people be like, oh, your best friend could never. You would, yeah, my like literally, my husband could never. He would. I could. He he wouldn't. He would never. If you asked me to, I would. I have asked you. You were like, no, nah, I can't do no, that. No, you, you haven't asked me. You I haven't asked, asked me you, seriously. I asked you when uh, we were buying the barbecue sauce. And Young's Backyard Barbecue yes, Sauce, by the way. It's and fantastic. Mrs. Young said. Fan- fantastic. Mrs. Young said that she told Mr. Young that if I can't have it, you can't have it. And he gave it up for her. That's because Mr. Young is a, is a very fine And you gentleman. were like. <laughs> That's good for fine. you. That's much, good for y'all's marriage, but much, I can't do that. Much better man than I could ever be. No, nah, if you if you genuinely came to me and said, "It's not Almighty, fair that you got me pregnant, but all, you still get to drink bourbon." Almighty, beer, merciful husband, and David, smoke cigars, David. So I will give up one or the other. No, I will not give up. I will give not give up. up both. Okay, then I'll only give up one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's your baby. You come out with six eyeballs. That's fine. You have nobody to blame but yourself. I'll be sitting there with the nurses just judging you. Just mm. You know that, that that old black lady you be in your family in her head just be like mm. Yeah, because she's got neck mm. issues. Yeah, well. There's one old black lady in every every family. Anywho. No, I'll give a I'll give what do you want me to give a bourbon? 
No, I want you to want to give it up. I don't want to have to. I want you to. I don't. Like, I don't want to give it up. But I if, want you to if be like, I, baby, it's not fair that I impregnated you, in irresponsibly. Wait, so, so this all right. So I'm flipping the game no, because no, no. forever it's been 30, on women who who 30, to, to get pregnant. Me, so me, no. Let me, let me get thirty second time out. Thirty seconds. So number one, what we're not going to do, what we will not do, we being you, is is, is make this out to be some just irresponsible act by david like it doesn't take two to tango okay so number one you will not pin this last born birth on me i've pinned every it's birth a decision is a decision the first that we one made was your fault because no. you didn't put me on insurance so i couldn't get birth well control. i'm so sorry that we have brought two beautiful young girls into this world the and we're preparing one. and we're preparing to bring a third child into this world uh, gender of which we do not currently know, nor will we know until the baby shower. So I'm sorry that your life has been so ruined by the two blessings that the Lord has given us. Thanks. You poor, poor soul. Thank you. Finally, you acknowledge. I'm still not giving up. <laughs> See? Cigars and bourbon. I'll give you one. Yeah. I'll give you one. You ain't about it. You're not down for the cause. You're absolutely right. I'll give you one. Irresponsible. No, I'm not irresponsible. You are irresponsible. I'm very responsible, no, actually. You're not, if you're responsible, you're the only children I birthed it. are 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 the ones that that have been with 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 my wife. That's that very you know that's of. very responsible. No, trust me. Yeah, I know of, and I know that there are only two little David Rushings walking around with the third Sit down some random Tuesday with the third dinner. Pending. Knock knock knock. Are you my daddy? No, nah. <laughs> no, we're not about that life over here. And Donna Doris raised me right. So I will give you one. What have you ever given up for me? Hmm? Outside of pregnancy, of course. You you still want to keep you when wanna... I when I was out of work, did you give up your job? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that was an option. I could have. Huh? Did you say, you know what, baby? If you're gonna be unemployed, I'm gonna be unemployed too. I'm gonna, gonna give up this I'm gonna give up work. We're gonna be poor oh, together. My bad. I yeah. didn't know that's did how you Did you did you make that sacrifice? I can't. No, no, you didn't. I didn't realize you wanted to be yeah. living out of a so, car. Pot calling the kettle black. She all bark. Do y'all but see no this bite. recklessness? No follow through. This recklessness that I no have follow through, to live with. Pulling the string. Anyway, I'm done bantering with you. Do you have anything else to say? Yeah. I am a stand up guy, despite what this person to my right may have you believe he's irresponsible i am a fabulous husband creme de la creme matter of fact you can be creme de la and not only that i am black and educated congratulations i'm a master a whole master's degree and a bachelor's two degreed up congratulations yeah you're still irresponsible (laughs) (laughs) you can have all the accolades and still be irresponsible. I'm trying to figure out why you're not in. It seems like you're not in focus. I think it's just. Is it just that, the monitor? That monitor. It might be the monitor. Sorry. It's not very flattering. I actually can't, it's, wait. It's very, yeah, I it's, can't wait for you to take the camera off of me. Yeah, it's very flat. Um, it's a flat image. I have to change the picture profile. Sorry. Technical talk here on Rush Vibes. Um, yeah, just the, the audacity. Whatever, man. Jessica. I'm done with you. Uh, and you know it's no and, and, and it's no wonder why her oldest child behaves in the manner in which she does because no, she she do she has the negative. After we've talked we've talked about this here in Rush Vibes. Yeah, I've I've coined an acronym, N A E, negative African energy. So what you all just saw in that three set, three minute bit epitomized the negative African energy. But here's a kicker: Jessica has passed this. Along to our oldest child, who threw a, f- a f- the fit of fits. Yeah, she was taking shots at everybody. She was everybody. Mad at the baby. And, and she had the audacity to say, I, you know, I went upstairs, was trying to do some laundry, literally gone for like five minutes. I come downstairs, it's like World War Three. Everybody's picking sides, and the youngest one is just like over in the whole world being Switzerland. And I'm like, what's going on? And Jessica's telling me what's going on. Silas is just, uh, Yo, and then the this little girl had the nerve crier. to say, I just want to live somewhere else. No, she said, this is why I want to live this somewhere This is why else. I want to live somewhere else. I was like, oh, okay. I was so cool you know with what? it. Go on. You got, so some, you you got take, options? Take your little yellow self up to your room and you can sit. And you know, when I went back up to talk to her, she had her wish. 
<laughs> she had her blinds pulled. It was like looking out the window. I guess like maybe she would put out an SOS. Um, I tried so hard to not send her to her room because I'm trying nah. to get into the habit no, of, not you know, not making her seclude herself when she's having a meltdown. But she intentionally cries in the most of no- I'm talking uh, 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 like just so that everybody can hear it. And she, she's fine. Like, you know, she's she's she doesn't even remember why There's she's crying anymore. Absolutely nothing. But yeah, it got ugly. Some, I'm sure some 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 child psychiatrist psychologist is like, that's the worst thing to do. But you know what? It is. You're not supposed to send them well, away. Well, we, we we tried. We did. And we let her go go get her get herself together. Let her get her frustrations out while we weren't around. And it was only for like five minutes. And then I went up and talked to her after she was able to calm herself down. So I, I feel like that's it was balanced. That's reasonable. And that's the way my mom, I think, raised me. For the most part, I know as I got older, that's kind of how we did things. Um, I can't speak for when I was when I was like a kid, like her age, because I don't I don't remember to be honest. But yeah, she was wild. So that negative African energy, it is strong. And it's Savi, like the, it's and like, Savi was just like, it's like right, the I'm it's a, like the force. I'm gonna console you for a little bit, and then I'm gonna move on with my. And Savi really was the one who triggered it. Savi's allegedly, allegedly because Savi was going to comfort her, and Salas was being rude because I was talking to her. And she then like stood behind a chair so that I couldn't see her. So I said, I am speaking to you. You're being rude and disrespectful right now. So then Savi is going to come put herself into it, like drunkenly walks over and is hugging her from what the angle I could see. But I couldn't see Salas. So I said, Salas, come out. I am speaking to you. Because Chick wanted to build a fort and couldn't get her fort to work, but wanted like the cushions from the couch. And I was like, nah, there's too much stuff under there. And if you pull the cushions out, then I have to vacuum the couch. And I'm not ready for that. So I said, I said it like four times. And I said, if I have to say it one more time, I'm taking your tablet away and you're not building this fort. So I said it like she didn't say anything to me. She's ignoring me. I said it one more time. And then I said, all right, no more tablet and no fort. Oh, Savi, you got me in trouble. It was over. You're so mad. I'm so mad at you. And I was like, so first of all, there are going to be plenty of opportunities where your sister actually gets you in trouble. This is not one of them. So I'm not going to let you throw her under the bus and be bad. So she like has the audacity to go into David's office and close the door. And started beating on the wall. I'm like, you're not about to beat on my, my so, office wall. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to be mad, like she didn't go into the bathroom. There's a closet. Well, I think she wanted to go upstairs, but she realized the child gate was locked and she can't unlock it. So she made a, she pivoted. And, and went to the only place that she knew she could get away. Um, and, you know, what's crazy is when I was bringing her out of my office, she was like, Savi needs to apologize to me now. <laughs> like, Savi, your sister can't speak. Like, she literally can't talk. But so, if she, the parent, thing I was upset about was, parenting vibes. if she wanted, if she was really being restrained by Savi, which Savi's, all of 20 pounds. Like, so if she wants to get out from under Savi, she can. It was the principal fact that she was ignoring me. And I was speaking to her and she wasn't saying anything back. And then tried to blame Savi. Because she could have been like, I can't stand up Savi sitting on me. Like, Savi sits on her all the time. Um, but she didn't do that. But it wasn't until I took something from her that she got upset. And then tried to project that anger onto her sister. So I was like, no, no. there In the so, future, there are going to be plenty of opportunities for you to for your sister to get you in trouble. So Silas is gonna see this episode in like ten years and be like, Oh, see, I was bad mouthing me on the podcast after we're you put me, bad put, you. put me to bed early and then went and trash talked me on your, little, bad on your you. little on your little podcast. We're just speaking truth. <laughs> we are just speaking truth. Your little podcast or whatever. Um so yeah, it's been an interesting dynamic. And then not even thirty minutes into it, like later, they're hugging and jumping yeah. and giggling and just and having a great That's ultimately time. what what you want, what you want to see as like, a parent that they can resolve their issues quickly. But they didn't, Savi didn't care. Savi, didn't, well, the Salas could could get over her. Yeah, Salas can get over it. Savi, she cares enough about her sister that if she sees her sister in distress, she's gonna be there to support her. And then when she she's like me, she's like, all right, you've been crying too long, and I got yeah. I got videos on my tablet to watch so yeah. i'll come check on you later and then she'd look up at her and be like nope and then still go, like you still crying go right back to like check job. get your life <laughs> ah, so that's yeah. that's just a, a just a preview of what we deal with so, here um man, like that parenting 
parent vent session, I guess. Parent vent session vibes. Oh, that wasn't venting. That was just, that was, that was us venting. stating facts. If you, if you want to hear venting, I can vent. Because y'all. Yes, she can. These kids. These kids. Whew. I got one throwing cups at me when her cup is empty. She just, she just comes, throws it at me like, oh, refill me. Excuse me? I'm not the help and you you wouldn't treat the help like that actually you would you would treat the help like that that's how they treated the help back in the day well not the way i would raise my kids to treat the help anyway i'm done talking about these kids they take they (laughs) occupy enough of my time the podcast is supposed to be my opportunity to to live something for me anyway what what's good are we taking our break and then coming back uh i think so i'm 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 fearful of whoever else we may talk about if we if we keep going so um i think we should take a break we will come back and then we will jump into our first topic stay tuned and we back and we back, back. And, and we, we weren't back. bickering just now yeah, uh, we, yeah we were we were i'm just jessica I'm, was mad because she didn't get to take a nap today yeah Somebody interrupted my nap schedule, um, which I had, I'm to very, get, I had to get my hair did that I don't get paid for. So first get you pay impreg- with love, baby. First you impregnate people because you're irresponsible. And then I, I also have to do your hair. Get paid with love. Y'all. And then he was like, what do you do for me? What do you give up for me? Yeah, cause I you, gave didn't up give up no, you didn't give up no job. I'm not doing this. Back in the day. Speaking of jobs. Did we ever tell y'all if we ever told them about the time I quit my job while you were out? This is before we, we were married. So um, we talk a lot about. And we talked last episode about how we've taken turns being the breadwinner. Uh, so very early on, it's just it by by far and away the the breadwinner. She was working like fifty eleven jobs, um, and I had one. I, I was working at Wells Fargo uh, back when they uh, a lot of that shady stuff was being done, like opening accounts and blah blah blah. Uh, so I was working as a customer service representative. At least that's what I applied for. And that's what I thought I was going to be serving as. So when we got in for training, they came in and like, yeah, I know y'all applied to be customer service, whatever, but you are working over the phone sales with a dash of on uh, over the phone customer service. I was like record scratch. Wait a minute. I specifically did not sign up for a sales position because I am not a salesperson and I'm definitely not. If I'm any kind of salesperson, I'm not an over the phone salesperson. So I was like, Hmm. But I figured I had 30 days of training in the in the classroom so I can milk that, get a couple checks, and then uh, see what the, the floor atmosphere was like. Hated it. It was terrible. It was horrible. Unethical. Was miserable. Unethical. Immoral. Just shady. So, I mean, anyone who's familiar with, with what happened with the Wells Fargo knows the, the kind of stuff that was going on. But they had us opening, opening accounts and uh, pitching uh, unsecured credit cards to unsecured credit lines to people who had no business having it. Cause when you, someone calls in, you pull up their profile, you see all their money spending habits, things like that. And it was just, it was just bad. And I, I couldn't do it. I just, I, I, I have a very strong moral compass. And if, if I even get the slightest, slightest inclination that something I'm doing is scammy, it not have to be a full blown scam, just scammy, scamish. I'm out. I can't do it. So I used all my, <laughs> used all my PTO yeah. in like, in like two weeks. Once I got out onto the floor, and and some other things was happening in, per, in the personal life, and I was just like, yo, I can't, I can't do this. So I quit. At the time, uh, I was still living with my parents, but because I was working in the city, I was basically living with Jessica in her apartment for a, uh, you know, like majority of my time. Uh, so she happened to be on a tour. Uh, like a cross, I don't know if it was cross country, but it was like a I started in Wisconsin and we went all the way down to Atlanta. Yeah, um, so I quit, but I didn't tell her. I was gone for four months. No, I I, I didn't quit at the beginning of the tour. You were like in it, almost back. You had like a month left or a few weeks, but a few weeks left. So um, she came back, and then I was like, I was like yo. I waited till she was falling asleep. <laughs> I was hoping she was like, okay. And then roll over and go to sleep. I was like, I quit my job. And she was like, okay. And we weren't even married. So she could have been like, all right, bum, like get out my, <laughs> get out my apartment. Luckily she didn't do that. Um, but I'm yeah, good like that. but no, but notice what's not a part of the story is that Jessica didn't quit her job in solidarity. She kept working. She's selfish. Jessica came back because she's selfish. Spending four months on the road. 
She's selfish. And ended up finding two jobs. So pump your brakes. I I I I I've come a long way okay. from uh from where I once was, I will I will admit. Um generally speaking, general rule of thumb, even if even if you're not married, but especially if you are married, don't quit your job without telling your spouse. Even if you get laid off or fired, just tell your spouse. Because if you try to hide it and they find it anyway, it's gonna be ten times as worse. Mm-hmm. So but that's what we, we were bickering about that. We were complaining. Jess was complaining that she didn't get to sleep. Yeah, I didn't get to take my nap. Take but my nap. speaking of work, so as most of you know, work, 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 we uh, work are, are on the tail end of work. a pandemic, uh, less the Delta variant um, or whatever other corporate variant is going to creep up. Y'all, y'all think that Delta variant is serious? Wait till that. Delta variant as pro hits. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't be joking about it. I'm sorry. That, that, was, insen- that, was, that was insensitive. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, but, you know, the news has been talking about a lot of companies are getting ready to, you know, bring their workforce back. You know, they, you know, everybody's been gone and, and now it's time for people to come back into the office. You know, Apple. Yes. So there have been some companies that like probably at least three fourths of the way through the pandemic, they were like, you know what, if people want to work from home, work from home. There were some people who said, you know, when this is clear, we're going to do the hybrid model. Um, and some people were flat out like, look, when it's safe, you're going to bring your ass back to this office. And yes. yeah, because they were firm about Vulgar, it. Vulgar vibes. Oh, it's just ass. It's in the Bible. Um, sure. It's ass and, and uh, you sure it's not arse. <laughs> The Greek translation uh, is ass. So it's it just, Johnny, it, Johnny it, three, <laughs> Johnny three sixteen. Uh, so, arse. arse. So watching, um, you know, just a lot of these, these newscasters, you know, they're doing these journalists going out in the field and they're asking people their opinions. And some people are like, Oh, I like the hybrid model approach. So other people are like, no, I, I'm, I've gotten used to zooms and my PJs and, Other people are just like, I can't be in my house anymore. I cannot, I need a separation between, you know, separation between church and state, separation between work and home. Um, So I've, I've noticed that more recently, especially in Charlotte, the news they've been talking, we've got a lot of big corporations here, headquarters. Mostly mostly financial institutions. Yeah, I mean, we're a banking city. So, you know, they're the CEOs, head people, head honchos, they're, they're like, yeah, we're planning to have everybody back by September. Now, when they were saying this in March, like September was a ways away, but now we're, you know, we're, we're deep in July July. now. So September is right around the corner. So I guess I'm curious because one pre pandemic, I worked from home a lot. If I wasn't doing a marketing program that put me in the field, all of my administrative work was at home. I was managing programs from home. Uh, so I was used to being a remote employee long before the pandemic hit. So when people were like struggling with the pivot, I was like, y'all, some of us have been doing this. Like I've, I've been doing this for years. It's not that hard. Like put on your PJ, sit on your couch, get an extra pillow on your bed, you know, elevate your back. You can handle this. Um, but I had to acknowledge that some people's personalities can't handle offices. Like once I got used to remote working, whenever I'd go back to like the corp, like we do like, you know, a week in, you know, our Chicago office where everybody who's remote would come in and work with the office team. And I couldn't focus in the office. Like someone would walk by and I'd be like, what are you doing? Where are you going? What do you want to talk about? What's going on? Like I, I just couldn't, there were too many distractions. It's like, but at home I can hunker down and I can focus on on my work. So hearing these people essentially make it mandatory. And I know some people are saying like, hey, I'll quit my job. There are plenty of companies that are are, are seeking out talent who will work from home. It's For one, it's interesting because the pandemic has definitely shown us that there are lots of jobs that have required 9 to 5, 9 to 530 in the office um, since time immemorial of corporate life that could be be done at home. It's like that law, that complaint where it's like, you know, that Monday morning meeting that could have been an email. Um, Like we didn't have to all pile up in this room and have a conversation. And now we have to go back to our desk. So I guess I wonder, you know, how far, what cards do companies have? Because especially if you recognize that, yeah, my job is definitely a, a profession that can be done in the home. I, as long as I have my computer, 
I can be at just as productive here as opposed to 40 minutes, an hour in traffic, driving, paying to park, paying for gas, sitting in a cubicle or behind a desk, an hour break for lunch, getting back into it, and losing the flexibility of my pandemic life. So I, I, I guess I'm curious if people are going to say, if you're going to make it mandatory for me to come back to the office, then I'm just, I'm going to go find something else to do. And what companies are going to recognize that, hey, there's going to be a workforce of people who do not want to return to the office. We should prepare and post those. Um, so I don't really have like a full question, but it's just kind of the, you know, people in the beginning of the pandemic, everyone was like, oh, when are we going to return back to normal, return back to normal? What is going to be our normal from the professional sense? Yes. Okay. I, I don't know if that was just like a dramatic pause and you're going to keep going or, cause you know, I, you, you get rolling and then like six, seven topics later, you're like, what were we talking about again? So, um, yeah, so I, I think it's interesting that uh, I, you know, I, I just have recently changed jobs. I uh, left one company and, and have gone to another, but my my previous company uh, was very traditional, like like most um, most companies, office travel. But you're you have the flex. Sometimes you have an option to work from home, uh, but for the most part, you're either in the office or you're traveling. And um, before I left, they were talking about uh, downsizing the office spaces. I'm almost, I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but almost like completely eliminating them by like 2025 20, or something like that. Um, and the, only the, like only having like warehouse spaces for uh, field employees to kind of go in and get their materials. But like people who were at uh, management level like me um, would basically just, you know, work from home. And then if they needed to travel to a market, you know, they would, they would do that. So, I mean, you, you see some companies, they've kind of recognized that it's, it can be more efficient for employees to work from home, especially if they're not uh, field essential employees, because, you know, you don't have to, that's less you have to, you know, with the expense books and that's less you have to front uh, for travel and you have to overhead for, for office space. And I think, I don't, I'm sure there are studies out there. I haven't seen any, but just what my gut would tell me and what I saw uh, personally is that I think in, in certain industries, people have the ability to be more efficient working from home uh, rather than spending eight hours a day uh, in an office because how many, how many hours of 100% focused work like can one actually do in a day? Like even if you're in an office, I know a BS was the be last BS. time I worked in an office, I didn't, well, it wasn't really office space because I, I did a lot of, I was basically a, a courier, so I would pick up orders and bring them back into the office. So I only spent a little bit of time in the office, but you know, people in the office, they're checking social media, they're, they're kind of messing with their phone, or they may be daydreaming or walking to the water cooler, talking to, talking to their coworkers. They may not get, but you may be there for eight hours, but you may only be doing like four hours, four or five hours of focused work every single day. Um, and when you're working at home, uh, you can get you know things done around the house, but you can still get all of your workload done in maybe less than eight hours. Mm -hmm. So you get more of your, your time back times the one commodity that you can't get more of. It's, you know, that's you know, it's, it's limited. So I think that's why you see a lot of people who are like, nah, like I don't like we've proven it's been proven that working from home can, is a, is a sustainable you know work model, business model. Um, and there are plenty of companies pivoting toward that. So if a company wants to be, you know, traditional and kind of stuck in its ways and, and force people to come back into the office, people are looking elsewhere. And then you still have uh, unemployment benefits like here in North Carolina, um, the, the federal unemployment benefits um, assistance is still going. Um, so you have people who, depending upon what they have put away, they're like, I can still buy my time until I can find an opportunity that I feel suits the kind of lifestyle I want to live now. Uh, and you see it like, uh, this isn't, I don't know, this exactly fits the mold of the kind of businesses we're talking about, but fast food restaurants, they're throwing like $1,500. I was telling Jessica, I saw a fast food restaurant chain was throwing like $1,500, like sign on bonus for fast food. Fast food, $1,500. There was a restaurant that was offering bar free appetizers. And servers. No, <laughs> it was like $15 an hour, 401k, you get to keep your tips. 
I think it was like paid time I off. Be, I better get to keep like, my tips than my tips. <laughs> but I mean, if you're making fifteen dollars an hour, tips are are typically not something that are affiliated with your work. Yeah, it's not like fifteen is so. You're not rolling. I mean, they're really trying to recruit people, which I mean, it also it it goes into a systemic problem, um, just in terms systemic. of systemic. Yeah, of how like the American workforce is like like the history behind the forty hour work week is is appalling. I mean, do you know what it is? I'm curious. I, I do. I do vaguely, and a lot of it is just. I mean, it's, a lot of it is inbound in, in poverty. Like even tip the tipping system is is impoverished. It's it's it leads it it roots back into you know black people and, and keeping them down essentially, um, but. Because America is one of few countries that actually tip. Like other countries, you are insulting a server if you give them a tip. It, it, if you tip someone in Korea, they, they do not have to worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> they got no problem. Hey, I know you are no qualms like, with I me. I believe it's South I Korea, um, Japan. No, no problem. Put there that fifteen so, percent back in my pocket. There are so many countries that it's like they they pride themselves in the fact that their their employees are paid a livable wage. So it's yeah. not it, it's like pity if you're tipping them. Um, but like. There was there were times in this country where kids were were working in in factories and stuff. So sure. you know, I, but I think about the fact that you know, I struggle with going back to work. There have been times where I could I could have gone into an office, but I think okay, I want to be available if you know for some reason you know your kid's sick. Um, and you wake up in the morning, your kid can't go to, to school. I don't want to have to, you know, call in and have to worry about a sick day or PTO or, or mm-hmm. non-paid, whatever, to care for my kid. I also, you know, take into account that I, I want to be an available parent. I, if there's, you know, ballet, I want to be able to go to ballet. I want, if there's a field trip, I want to be able to, you know, chaperone a field trip. I want to be able to have the flexibility of if my kid has a doctor's appointment in the day, I can offset those hours into the evening when they're in bed and, you know, still get the work done. And I've had that luxury. Uh, and I think people have now had a taste of, I don't have to work this American structure that keeps me from living my life because, Yes, 40 hours a week is what you're doing in the office, but you're not taking into account what you're commuting, how much you're putting into yeah. gas. Like your job isn't paying you Yo, gas money to go commutes. from your home to the office to usually to pay for parking, whatever, um, all that time lost. Uh, and yeah, you get perks, but the perks usually are just a distraction of what you're actually losing. How much time are you losing with your kids? How, you know, how much time are you losing with your spouse? You know, who's getting up at five in the morning and out the door before everyone else even wakes up. So it's just, I think this pandemic has really exposed how, you know, corporate America, it works, but it doesn't work. Like, do we need to be in, in Uh the office Monday through Friday? Are there certain jobs that can be done Tuesday to Thursday? Tuesday, I mean, we, you have holiday weekends, long, stop it. (laughs) You have long weekends where, you know, Friday's off because it's a holiday or Monday's off because it's a holiday and the same amount of work gets done. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a a test, a pilot done by um, a big software company, a big global software company that I, cousin Lamont works for um that I think they tested I don't think they did it here in America I think it was in Japan they tested a four 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 day work week um and I think the results were overwhelmingly positive Mm -hmm. I think from terms of production as well as employee morale and and things like that and and this was like a year I think it was before like 2019 I think um and it caught a lot of steam here in America because uh, I think millennials uh in particular have been have been you know clamoring for something like a four-day work week uh, people have challenged the, you know, the forty-hour work week in terms of like five days, forty hours. Is it really necessary? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it as efficient as maybe like a four-day work week? Um, so I think, like the pandemic, as terrible as it was, I mean, and is, uh, you're you're seeing workers, s- s- kind of akin to like the the player empowerment movement you're seeing in like professional basketball, where players are now starting to have more power in dictating where they end up. A lot of workers are realizing that, hey, like I just said earlier, like there are companies who are kind of leaning in to this this new transition um, of working from home. We're offering more more hybrid uh, uh, work work structures. 
And they're like, yo, I don't need if you, you saying I got to be in the office. Cool. Here's my two weeks. <laughs> like, or I'm just, I'm just chill at the house, collect this unemployment until, you know, I can, I can get in somewhere, uh, you know, that's a little bit more suitable to my, to my lifestyle. Cause you mentioned commuting, um, the flexibility if, you know, the kids are sick or there's, there's a, there's a function that you forgot about, you know, having to juggle. And it's so much easier when you're working from home at my last, at my last job, uh, and a lot of this comes down to management, the kind of manager you have. I had a phenomenal manager, and anytime something came up, whether it was last minute or I had a few days' notice, she was like, "Yo, do what you got to do, because just make the time up." And that's all she like, just make the time mm-hmm. um, and do what you got to do. So, uh, I think, um, you know, it, people. I think this is. I think you're going to see a lot of uh, entrepreneurship coming out of the pandemic as you probably have I, I i believe you probably will see like when you look back over this period of the ne- of the past you know when we get to like 2025 if you look over the course of 2019 to 2024 like you'll have seen like probably a a rise in in, in small business uh businesses being started um because you know people are kind of seeing how quickly a job can go away right like coronavirus hit you know, companies were, were had to reimagine how they wanted to operate. Budgets got slashed, payrolls got slashed. Um, I got furloughed, like I was kind of, you know, I, I got caught up in it, so I, I saw firsthand how quickly things can can change. Um, so people are like, no, I enjoy, you know, having ownership over my time. And if I can't find something that's going to give me that, maybe I should look into to starting it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's an interesting. I think it's it's a fascinating time. I mean, as economies are opening back up, and we're seeing people trying to return to like life as we as we formerly knew it, uh, that's kind of happening at the same time of this shift in and like the workforce because you still see like a lot of the service based businesses are still struggling. Like you still see signs like, "Hey, we're closed because we can't find enough people to come in. We can't find our staff won't come back to work." And it's unfortunate to the small business owners who try, who, you know, try to do things right, try to pay, you know, the, the, the most livable wage that they can afford without um, endangering the, you know, their business, mm-hmm. their revenue flow. But, you know, that's just, this is the nature of the beast. I mean, evolution, businesses evolve, economies evolve, the mindset of, of generations of workers evolve. And I think we're just seeing, uh, you know, millennials and whatever the generation is behind us. Uh, kind of trying to take a little bit more ownership over their lives and their and their careers, and they're still gonna. You're still gonna have the people who climb the corporate ladder. You're still gonna have people going to the office five days a week. I was talking with a friend on Facebook, and he said he was going in throughout the pandemic. He still had to go into work. So I mean, that's. I don't think that's going away, but <clears throat> I think you're seeing a lot of companies kind of smarten up and realizing that they can pivot to to maybe a more uh, modern. Um, you know, business business structure, and you know, job applicants and professionals are kind of trending that way. So it's fascinating. I, it's it's cool to read about and kind of just watch as it watch as it happens. Um, did you have a question? I feel um, like I rambled, but was there a question? I may that people, have, and I just don't remember. Okay. But like to your point, I mean, you had mentioned you know a lot of people. I've seen a lot of posts regarding um, unemployment and people saying, you know, oh, people are making so much on unemployment. That's why they don't want to work. And that's why these companies are struggling. Um, And I kind of have a two-folded opinion on on that. Obviously, I I, I support the unemployment because we were in a global pandemic and people couldn't work. Like, I had a situation. I had gotten approved for unemployment and somehow and this was in 2020 somehow there was there was a discrepancy and i literally went all of 2020 going back and forth with the department of employment um didn't get my unemployment and i I, they were like (laughs) no but if i went in i was doing the certifications i had been approved for an amount and everything didn't get it um which was really frustrating because um, I kind of wor- I worked as an independent contractor. I, you know, I, I I'm always freelance, um, but I had I think I worked in an industry where it's it's front facing. It's, pe- it's, it's people facing. So even if I'm not directly in front of people, I'm managing people. I'm, I'm working with clients who are expecting me to get people to be f- 
front facing for their brands. Yeah. Um, and then so you know it take in North Carolina it takes a ye- you have to your application has to expire before you can apply again. And because I didn't work in 2020 because my industry was shot, um, I I didn't get approved in 2021 when I reapplied again. So I would get really frustrated when people say, oh, you know, people are making all this unemployment money, so that's why they don't want to work. Uh, that's not the case. Like, people wanted to work. Um, but people were in situations where they genuinely couldn't work. And it, it was just interesting to me how short-sighted a lot of people could be during the pandemic and how people were making it seem like $300 a week was so much money that it would keep someone from working. Um, Oh, it was like 600 when you add it to the the state. But still for, you know, unless you're single and you're in, you know, you don't, you pay rent. Maybe you're living with your parents or you're living with someone who doesn't require you to pay rent. 600 a week doesn't cover all the expenses for someone who like genuinely lives on their own. If you have a car, take that 600 hit magic city. If you have Have a car note, if you have, um, an apartment or a home, if you have electricity, if you have a cell phone, if you have, stop it. If you have water bill, like $600 a week over the course of a month is not going to be enough to, to pay for all of these things. Um, you could, you could probably be strategic and pull it. Six by four is 2,400 a month. That's, I mean, that's, that's it depends on where you're living, though. If you're living in a city like Charlotte, yeah, my last apartment was a one bedroom. I think I was paying twelve hundred. And, that, and, and, and that's true. And, and some states have a higher, higher uh, minimum payment for unemployment. Like North Carolina, I think is like one of the lowest. It's like two thirty, two hundred thirty up, two hundred thirty bucks. I think. Yeah. Um, it's like no, I think that's the max that you can get. It's like two forty five or something like that. I think I've gotten two fifty a week. Okay, so maybe years um, ago, this was years ago. Um, but it's, it's definitely like it's not a lot, yeah. In North Carolina, and their system is very is very low. I need somebody trash. to work. So on if that. you have another state where their minimum is like maybe four hundred, then you can kind of see. But how. then the four hundred is canceled out by the cost of living for that air that area. I feel like there's sure. there's like an equation that they figure that out. But you know, people were just kind of making it seem like forty five seconds. This is, this is, you know, people are just getting paid to stay at home, and that wasn't the case at all. So, you know, you have fast food places not having employees because they're recognizing that, yes, they need to start paying more. Um, and you'll have some people say, you know, fast food industry is for kids. Like, the kids are supposed to work these jobs, but kids, needs man- kids need managers. They need HR people. They need um, supervisors. Um, you don't want a 16-year-old as the shift supervisor when something pops off in a, in a f- fast food chain. Um So I used to be torn as to, yeah, like leave minimum wage for the kids. But, you know, some kids are helping with their families. Some kids are, you know, providing meals. You know, their parent might be disabled. So um, here, I'll stop here and then we can we can jump on when we come back from break. We'll be right back. Yeah. So we were talking about just just you can always tell when Jess is into a topic because like. When we come back from he a break, there's hit, no, he barely hit record. There's no, there's talking. no banter. There's no we back and you know, we just is just like, yeah. So as I was saying, <laughs> go ahead. I'm not, I'm not uh, going to stand. I'm not going to stand in your way. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So go, please. This is you standing in my way. I'm sorry. So we were, we were talking about, you know, just minimum wage in America and, you know, people are upset about some people are upset about the idea of raising the minimum wage, especially in certain industries because they feel that, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, get your education, and you won't need to work at a McDonald's. But, you know, a lot of, you know, surprisingly, a lot of people who work in jobs that you wouldn't consider significant, grocery store managers, restaurant managers, retail managers, these people have degrees. We had a, I don't know what, I don't know if he's still there now, but we had a former coworker who found out that he had like a master's degree in in history or something like actually really fascinating and i remember thinking like you've got a whole master's degree and you're you know you're in here managing a store or he was one of the the managers shout out, shout out to taylor I, we, we can name him his name is taylor oh taylor. i don't like we said we're not gonna put taylor reed no nah, we're not gonna tell them where, where they work okay you can shout out taylor because I, I, I believe i believe taylor and and i believe taylor supports the podcast taylor so we def- I lo- I love we're taylor. definitely gonna go show um, we're definitely gonna show taylor Reed some love i believe taylor has a master it's like it's like something history fascinating something, it's I history think. or like fine arts it's something really fascinating and i remember finding out and i was so amazed um but it was through that that i realized how so many people have like education and 
how we underestimate the intelligence that's required in working in the service world, whether it be retail, whether it be, you know, I, I know people who, you know, own bars, who manage bars, and they have, you know, master's degrees. They, they have studied in school, but they just genuinely enjoy the work, and their studies have equipped them to do the job well. Um, but people don't expect them to earn a livable wage. <laughs> I remember I was on Indeed and somebody had some company had posted a job and it was like master's degree required, but the paid rate was twelve fifty, and I was like USD twelve fifty. Like I got a whole master's degree debt, and you're only gonna that? pay me twelve fifty. It must be I don't have any. Oh, yeah, it must be my work. Must be my work phone. Um, Sunday night. Who's in the text? I mean, it's Monday night on a holiday. Who's sending me emails? Anyway, um, so I just I, I the was, audacity. I was always bothered by that that aspect in the pandemic. How people kind of made it seem like there wasn't a reason why unemployment had been raised. Like it was almost as if some people had completely forgotten that. Hey, it's a global pandemic. Some people genuinely can't go into work. Um, but I do feel like this is a time for the intelligent members of Gen Z um, and then, excuse me, the millennials to really kind of play their hand right and say, look, the way corporate structure is set up may have worked for our parents, may have worked for us pre-pandemic, but we have a lot to offer and we need flexibility. We, we, like I know some companies, they said, okay, you can work remotely, you can relocate from Silicon Valley. We'll adjust your, your pay based off of the cost of living on where you live, which I don't know if I support or don't support because if this is what you feel my job is worth, it shouldn't matter where I live because I'm, I'm still putting in the same effort. Um, mm. yeah, okay. I, right. I, 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 just go for I, it. I can, I can agree and disagree with that. Okay. Cause you just, like you just said, like when you're factoring unemployment the factors in cost of living and things mm -hmm. like that, and their salaries are absolutely factored on the cost of living in which the cities, those positions are supposed to uh, operate within, within the cities that those positions are supposed to operate. So, But if they can afford, if they've already budgeted that the person's going to live in the city and they're yeah, going to make the $80,000. But if you, uh, but let's not act like, <laughs> okay, let's not act like companies aren't trying to save wherever they can. They have bottom they're lines to consider. They're saving because they don't have to pay rent because I'm not in the office anymore. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I, I mean, in a perfect world, salary companies would pay people like just the max that they could always pay. Because why would you hire somebody if you didn't think that they were like Working. if you if you've got a range and it's not like ridiculously wide, you know, just go ahead and pay them. But that's that's not how companies operate. Like even <laughs> I, I won't say it, but like I, I've had experience, like recently had experiences with with the fact that sometimes companies they just they they have these rules that they abide by when it comes to negotiations and salaries and that's what they stick with but cost of living is definitely factored in mm -hmm. so and the cost of living I, ideally speaking yes i absolutely agree with you but that's not always the case but i, I think overall it just kind of shows how skewed our system is um i don't live in other countries i know you know like in greece or italy even brazil like you can't if Brazil, you don't make appointments I've heard like Brazil, if someone makes like a time, like, oh, we're going to meet for a business dinner at five. It's insulting if you show up at five. They're okay. not going to show up till like seven. Um, in Italy, in Greece, you don't like they take lunch seriously. Like everything is shut down from like noon to four. It's shut down. You're not going to get you're not going to get no food. You're, you know, you're not doing any corporate bit. Like these people are taking rest seriously. It makes you wonder, is that why they're healthier? Because they're, they're, they have time to take a nap in the middle of the day. Uh, I remember seeing something, maybe it was on one of the social mediums. And this lady had, she was American and she was living in Europe. And she was talking to her coworker about, you know, just, you know, their benefits and stuff. And she said, so how many sick days do we have? And the guy was like, if you're sick, you just don't come to work. And she said, okay, but how many days can you do that? And she was like, he said, if you're sick, you tell them you're sick, you don't come to work. There's not a number of days, you just don't come to work. And what about vacation? Okay, you need to take a vacation, you take a vacation. So 
But American system is not like that. 365 days in a year, most companies are like, here's two weeks. 365 days, a company is going to give you 14 business days. Tack on weekends, roughly, we'll say what, roughly 20 days if you tack on weekends. But weekends don't count as business days. So what... How how is this like healthy? Like how are we creating a society that's supposed to be healthy when we're just taught to work and work and work? Capitalism, baby. I know capitalism is terrible. Mm, it's but great, it's but it's, not, terrible. it's terrible. Um, and it there there's room for adaptation. And I say that because this is someone who, even though I worked from home, I was working seven days a week. I had activations that were happening Monday through Friday. And then I had activations that were happening Saturday through Sunday, and they were happening on all parts of the country. So even though, yeah, I'm home with my kids, um, spending time with my family, but, you know, I have an activation that's going live. So I'm texting a BA. I'm making sure they're there. I'm checking their setup pictures. Um, I'm not really getting days off, but I was, because I work from home, in my mind, it's like, oh, there's a leisure of working from home, the leisure of my PJs, the leisure of, you know, kind of doing things at my own pace that I don't even realize what I've lost, that I'm not even able to be present 100% of the time, that I'm staying up till midnight because I'm like, oh, this email came in and I can just, you know, knock it out real quick. Oh, well, while I'm working on this, I can do something else. <coughs> So I think the structure of the American Appreciate system. Appreciate you coughing into your elbow. Thank you. <clears throat> the structure of the American system is not really conducive. That, that Delta variant. <laughs> I got it. Is not really conducive to the family. And it, it's almost contradictory. You have this American dream. You get married. You buy a house. You have two and a half kids. And, you know, you work till you're 65 and then by the time you're 65 you're tired your your back hurts and now i'm 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 hopefully healthy enough to be able to do all the things i wanted to do when i was younger but couldn't do because i was raising kids and working 40 hours a week i don't know i just feel like the pandemic is definitely the groundwork for change and not just you know racial change which i feel like we're kind of on a pause on a yield with that right now um but just change in general. Like, let's let's change our corporate system. Let's switch the clock. Maybe I can only come in two days a week, and I can do everything else from home. If it doesn't require me being in the office, why do I have to be there? If it doesn't have to be a meeting, send an email. Like, memos and minutes are great. Um, you can still have collaborative, collaborative meetings without, you know, being in person. Um and just the whole, like, the, the misconception of, oh, our work office has a fridge that's always loaded with, you know, waters, flavored waters. And we've got, like, a green tea dispenser. And we've got this fancy coffee machine that nobody knows how Pizza to do. Pizza on Fridays. Pizza Fridays. Like, we do corporate lunches for you. And then we do, you know, field day where we bring in cornhole and everybody so, throws cornhole in a food truck. So, for, for just a little bit of um, objectivity. There are people who do, you know, whose sole purpose is to be the best and brightest professional that they can be and have the most uh, acclaimed career that they can Absolutely. that they can have. And you're actually one of those people who are, for the most part, as long as I've known you, you've been one of those people who you say you always want to get on the ground floor of the company, work your way up to, you know, a high level executive or, or shot caller decision maker. I can't get in at the executive level, um, above the ground level, if so, I can skip it. So, I mean, there's people who, who who are single or even if they have a family, you know, there's their main priority is to to ascend. That way they can can provide for their family, maybe not necessarily spend all of their time with their family, but to give their family the kind of lifestyle that, you know, that that they have in their mind. So um, and in and, and my personal opinion, I think uh, I, I, I'm definitely pro less meetings. <laughs> I'm, I'm pro uh, work-life balance. Um, I'm pro, you know, uh, modifying the, the, the 40 hour work week or the, or the, the five day work week. I'm pro all of that. Um, I think it would be, it would be great. And I think you might actually see efficiency and productivity go up because people will get more time away from work, away from the office, away from work related activities, away from, you know, company phones going off at all hours of the day. I think it'd be great. 
Um, the problem is a lot of the people, a lot of the decision makers, a lot of the people at the top of these companies are just, they're old. Um, mm-hmm. So they have that, that old way about them and it's, you know, Boomer. it's business, business as usual. So that's why a lot of younger companies, startup companies, you know, they're, they're sort of pivoting. Um, people who are, who are pursuing entrepreneurship because they want to have a certain work life balance once things get rolling. Um, I think uh, one of the, the misfortunes of social media is that you get entrepreneurs on there, you get creators on there and you, you see them uh, talking about how much uh, freedom, time freedom they have once their their product or their business has gotten going. They don't always talk about like the early stages where you'll probably work more than you would at a nine to five because you got it. There's nobody but you. There's nobody paying you. You got to go out and you got to get yours. So you got to hustle and, and bustle and, 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 and whatnot. But still, the prospect of being able to be your own boss or to, to, to structure your company or your business however you want to, I think is enough to lure somebody in um, to jumping into entrepreneurship if they have, you know, a worthwhile product or, or service. So, you know, I, I get where you're coming from. I, I think this is, this is somewhat, this is something that we align on. Um, I definitely would want more time back to be with, be with my family and, you know, art. Right, that's always the ultimate goal just to put ourselves in a situation financially where, you know, we have uh, more control over our time and, and when we go somewhere, what we do or, or you know, whatever. But um, I think there's still a, a good amount of the workforce, a good amount of professionals who, who want to have that, you know, they want to be all about their job and, and climb the ladder and, and succeed. And, you no, know, hats off to you. Like I, I, I have several coworkers who I'm, who I'm pretty close with who, who are of that mindset. And I think it's great. And I cheer them on every, every step of the way. I think it's fantastic for people to want to succeed. Um, but I still think there should be, you know, there, there should still be a space and a work environment for those who want to have a good career. You know, they want to, they want to, um, they want to climb the ladder to some extent, but they still want to be able to spend, uh, they don't want to spend all their time at work. They want to spend the majority of the time with their family and have the flexibility to do things um, like take kids to doctor's appointments and be able to be home when kids are sick. So, like I said, it's going to be fascinating to see how, how things kind of move forward out of this pandemic. I'm I'm really excited to kind of see, you know, what new trends take place and, and how companies, you know, restructure their, their business models. And I do want to clarify that there are jobs that, absolutely need to be in an office in a headquarters around people because that's just the name i mean you can't only so many doctors can be remote like an er doctor needs to be in the er for when the emergency hits yeah you can't do that over zoom <laughs> um so the surgeon hey grab that scalpel right there and <laughs> the, the, the 90 fire degree fire, angle like we can't do like remote like they're not automated fire trucks that can get their way um so grab your fire and, extinguisher <laughs> Um, turn it on so at first responders like there are jobs that we recognize need to be done in person but there are yeah. also jobs that you know it's they could probably afford to to be hybrided sure they can they can afford to not go back to the office or give people the option like hey do you want to if you want to come back there's a cubicle for you there's a desk for you there's an office for you and then you don't have to have so many people crowded on top of each other um i think that's also nice like you do two weeks training in person and then bye like if you want to keep coming in come in um if you want to go back go back um you can work from home or not or you can set up a schedule or you know we can have a team of people who you know your a day b day and some people come in monday wednesday friday and some people tuesday thursday this week and then they switch it up next week um but yeah we do recognize that in reality there are jobs that require being in person but there are also ways around it and it's also important for corporations to recognize that you know you need to support your employees overall well-being um, and if you want the most productivity in the happy workplace, like they also have to have lives outside. Um, and it just bridges into a whole bunch of things like how can people date if they're working all the time? Um, how can people be good spouses, good parents if they're working all the time? So just something to think on, just something that's popped into my head, something I've noticed discussed a lot and it's just you know hey how are what is going to be the new normal because there's never going to be a returning back to what things were like in 2020 i mean 2019 um 2020 has pivoted how we are going our outlook on everything so i am curious 
who who's gonna who has the power in this situation and who's gonna then who's gonna recognize who has the power what corporations are gonna say hey let's take advantage of this workforce that's like we want to be able to be in a cabin in Asheville or be on a beach house in Savannah um in the middle of the year with it's not vacation and still being able to be in meetings and get our work done who wants to travel in an rv across the country but still be able to work um the, the and there's going to be companies that say hey we appreciate your talent we appreciate your capabilities we'll meet you we'll meet you here we'll meet you halfway and we'll let you do you as long as you get your work done so yeah that's all i got That's all I got. This was just was Jessica's episode. She, My opinionated truth. Her opinionated truth. So uh, I think that that is a wrap on episode 30. What did we say? Five? Cinco. Five. Wow. It's 15 away from 50. We're getting up there, y'all. Getting up there. Rush Vibes is old. Getting long in the tooth. Um. So yeah, as, as Jessica said at the beginning of the episode, uh, we we don't do it as regularly anymore, but we do appreciate it. Uh, anyone who has liked us on Facebook, followed us on Instagram, subscribe here on YouTube where you're watching this. Subscribe to the podcast either via Apple or Spotify or TuneIn, Stitcher, Google. We appreciate all the support uh, from the fellow Vibe Tribe members out there. Um, we appreciate all the love you all showed us on uh, episode 30, was it 30 or 31, where we announced um, Jessica and that Jessica and I are expecting. We got a lot of great notes um, and messages. So thank you for the, the showing. we get a lot of great gifts. I could use <laughs> thank, a you for the, thank you for the outpouring. And of, a double stroller. Of love and, and, and support. We and clothes if it's a boy. We appreciate you guys. And food gift cards because um, okay. I don't want to cook after the baby's born. Okay, I need you to be quiet. Um, try to do the bit. So uh, if I'm you, trying to do the bit too. If you're, uh, but as Jess said, if you're, if you're new, happen to stumble upon us via algorithm or somebody share one of our posts uh we would like to ask you to subscribe um join the vibe tribe uh, we got episodes every wednesday and we definitely uh want to grow this thing so if you're here watching us for the first time go ahead like the video subscribe and join us along the ride as we as we grow as one of charlotte's top podcasts I want to say, you know, striving to be Charlotte's top podcast. Not one of them. We want to be the top. We want to be number one. We don't want to be one of them. We want to be the one. Uh oh. I'm the one. So we'll be back next week with, <laughs> with a new episode. Um, y'all stay safe. I'm going to bring Jay Belk in. Um, it's summertime. There's droughts going on all over the country. Don't use too much water. And hurricanes. But make sure you wash your butt. Um, we love you. We love you guys. Appreciate the support. We'll see you next week. Bye. We out. Way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now.